it's, it, you shouldn't yeah, get in trouble. We, we, it'll be okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, first up this week. Okay. A revision, but it's a pretty big revision. Um, this is the micro lipo. It's our, you know, plug into USB and uh, charge a battery charger. We use this for our lipo batteries. And uh, it's very convenient because, again, I just love to plug into USB and then just, you know, charge up your battery. Um, the older version had a jumper. It originally come, would come with 100 milliamps. And then there'd be a jumper on the bottom. You'd short that out. And then you'd get 500 milliamp charge rate. But I was like, I was kind of doing a bunch of revisions. And I was like, ah, you know, um, let's revise this as well as while we're at it, let's add a switch instead. Because I made all the components of 603 instead of 0805. Um, I tucked them all a little bit to the right, and then I actually had enough space to add a slide switch. So the slide switch, uh, you know, uses with any of our, our Adafruit batteries. Do watch out for the polarity. I also had polarity markers um, in a very, you know, right next to the con- uh, connector. Um, but you can switch from low, 100 milliamps, to high, 500 milliamps charge rate. Um, so if you're having little tiny little batteries, go with 100. If your battery is over uh, 500 milliamp hours, you can switch over to the charge rate to to, to five, um, and you'll charge up in an hour or uh, or less. It'll be much faster. So I thought this was a nice little update. Um, so uh, pick up a micro lipo. Uh, it's a great way to get your batteries charged up. Next up. Next up. It is a QTification. Um, still going through a lot of our old boards that have I squared C and making them STEM IQT compatible so people can use them without needing um, to do soldering. So this is the SI5351. Uh, this is a really cool Scilabs chip that's a clock generator. We have a you know nice precision 25 megahertz crystal on there. And um, it generates three outputs. I think it's what eight kilohertz to 160 megahertz output. So, you know, good for if you just need like, uh, I need like a 10 megahertz reference clock, or I want to, you want to clock something, or a lot of people actually use it for RF projects. Uh, if you need a, a reference square wave, um, this will get it to you again. It's not a sine wave, it's a, it's a square wave. And uh, this, we're still going to stock the old version, which ha- is just a little bit wider, um, in case you want three SMA outputs, because this has three output pins, and each one is gives you a different signal. So there, you can see zero, ground, one, ground, two. Um, you can control it over I squared C. We have a library in Arduino, and we have a library in CircuitPython or uh, Python. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I'll just show really fast the two versions, just because it's a little, hold on, let me zoom back out. Okay, I can go to the overhead. Okay, so this is the new version, but again, we're gonna still stock the old version. So the new version, uh, it's much more compact and you've got the STEM IQT ports on the side. You can still connect one RP or SMA or RPSMA connector. I uh, use the edge launch and you just solder it on it. You, you know, the, the pads line up actually perfectly. Uh, so you can just um, solder right onto them. So here you go and you have one output and that's actually what most people want. If you want to have SMA connectors, edge launch connectors for all three outputs, uh, you should keep with the old version, which looked like this and had uh, the three outputs at the top and then um, also mimic down here. So, so, you know, there's two mechanical layouts. I think people have use for both, uh, but for a lot of people, they really only need one output. So this is nice. Connect to I squared C and you get, um, you know, your outputs here, uh, three of them on a breadboard or one of them with a uh, edge launch connector. But both use the same code, both use the same crystals, chips and everything. So they're, they're cross compatible. Okie dokie. And the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our entire team and staff at Adafruit, our community, our customers, everybody who's hanging out here in the chat, and everybody who helps make this thing go is. Spiffy Lash. No, yeah. it's the SPI Flash Breakout. So we had last week or the week before, we put in the QSPI Flash chips. Um, and those were great for um, three, mega, three volt microcontrollers and boards that um, especially wanted to use, you know, quad SPI flash control. However, there's still a lot of people who um, are using five volt microcontrollers and they want that level shifting. And in that case, uh, I recommend this board, which will give you an SPI flash chip. In this case, it's a W25Q16. That's a 16 megabit, two megabyte flash chip. That's the thing on the right. 
um, a 4050 uh, logic level shifter and a three volt regulator. Um, so what is this used for? Well, if you're if you're doing a lot of data logging or you want to do da you know data storage, we recommend a micro SD breakout board. We we sell those and they're also level shifted. Um, and what's nice about that is it's got you know file, fat file system. You can take out the SD card, put it into your computer, um, and remove and and move files around, rename files. Um, but once in a while, you you don't need that much storage. You want something a lot um, lower cost and a lot less power and a lot less complexity. And that's where SPI Flash is going to do the job. Uh, so it's not uh, where leveled, but you know you have 100,000 writes. Um, it's not organized in any format unless you want to. So if you want to format with little fs, you absolutely can. You want to use fat? Go ahead. You want to treat it as one big flat memory file? Yeah. Totally cool. You can do write whatever, that on the back. Do whatever you want. Yeah, put a little bit of space on the back. So yeah. You can, you can write stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know we have uh, you know we have once in a while we have projects where it's like you can data log to it. Um, it's nice because it's mechanically stable. You know if you once you solder onto the board, there's no risk of like the micro SD card uh, coming loose. You also don't have to deal with corruption because again, it's one flat file system. Um, you know, we have Arduino libraries for it. Um, it's kind of a well-known chip style. Also, if you have existing um, older projects that used DIP SPI flash, so these chips used to come in DIP format and they don't anymore. And you're like, okay, I have to re, you know, I want to fit something in place. Um, this will do the job because they don't make five volt compatible SPI flash anymore. But this basically is the equivalent of a five uh, volt SPI flash chip uh, that's breadboard friendly. So I think, you know, still very useful if you don't need a ton of memory, um, which is, you know, would be an SD card. You don't need a tiny amount of memory, which would be an I squared CE prom. You know, these chips, two to 16 megabytes um, of storage and then. Uh, format it how you like, and again, a universally understood chip. Of almost every microcontroller uh, board understands, you know, how to talk to SPI Flash.